from Los Angeles. It's the Good Good Tom Likey Show. Tasty. And now, and now, here he is. Tom Likey. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likey Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Uh, there was a story that appeared in the Seattle Post-Intelligencer that many of you have sent to me. And uh, before I read to you from this article... Let me read to you some of the listeners' uh, comments who uh, sent the link. Then we'll read to you from the piece. Stu in Seattle writes in and says, This article appears in today's Seattle P.I. Read what this attention whore did after she got divorced. She actually had to throw a look at me, I need attention party for herself. I find it classic that part of this ritual involves winning a date with the bitch on February 14th because she says, I don't want to be alone on Valentine's Day. What a loser. Hope to hear about this on your show, Stu. Rick writes in and says, Tom, you've probably already seen this, but here's the link to a Seattle PI column about a whining, passive-aggressive, neurotic, 36-year-old divorced bitch who no man in his right mind would take a chance on dating. Reading the story about this ridiculous stunt, which she and her pathetic Oprah-watching cronies planned and staged, should be enough to scare any potential husband replacement away at warp speed. It almost sounds like another finger-down-your-throat episode of Sex in the City. <laughs> That's Rick. Alan writes in and says, This appeared in today's Seattle Post Intelligencer, and I'm sure other listeners have shared this with you by now. And you know, it's funny. Uh, when people write in about this stuff, they're almost always right. Uh, I almost never get just one email. Lots of you write in. Having recently reached escape velocity from a similar bra, it is my hope that I don't hear any silly new age feminist rhetoric from her friend. And, and here is the most telling sentence of all. Ladies, listen carefully to Alan's last sentence. Here is what he says. Most of these women need only to look in the mirror, look at a photo from their wedding day, then look back into the mirror to see why the man left. Ouch. Alan. So here is the story. I'm going to read to you, and then I'm going to get your reaction to this. It was a lovely ceremony. The bride wore black. And if her heavy veil, bowed head, and crumpled tissue said grieving widow, it was only fitting. For this was not a wedding, but an unwedding. A marriage wake to mark the death by divorce of Amanda Schultz's 11-year union with her dearly departed. I was married for life. That's how I felt, Schultz, 36, said on the eve of the ceremony, brown eyes spilling tears down her chiseled cheeks. I can't just let it go quietly. I have to honor what was good. And there was a lot of good. Even if it was only in my head, it was still good. So Schultz, Amy, to her friends, gathered friends and family Saturday night at a healing rite of passage like none had seen before. They came, 60 strong in evening gowns and black tie, to the Wing Point Golf and Country Club on Bainbridge Island. They came to share food, drink, and memories, and 
to help one woman ascend from the post-divorce pit of despair. Between the melancholy strains of Danny Boy and the up-tempo beat of Celebrate Good Times, Schultz paid tribute to her marriage's prime, the sorrow of its passage, and the official start of the rest of her life. And it was a blast. In the waters off Kodiak, Alaska, her former husband was skippering the Clyde, riding a weather break with his commercial fishing crew. James Hayden, Seamus, one and all, was only vaguely aware of the very public ceremony being conducted by Schultz and their mutual friends, but he got the lowdown from attendees and learned more through Schultz's website, www.marriagewake.com. I'm taken aback by it a little bit, Hayden said slowly, but I'm not upset by it. It's just kind of taken me by shock. I guess I feel that if it helps Amy out, then I'm all for it. It was my marriage also, and a lot of it was great. Even though I couldn't attend this thing, I also celebrate the life and passing of our marriage. The event makes me feel, I guess it really puts a finality on it. Schultz had planned this evening for six months, since the August day she knew her marriage was over. It started with a stricken phone call to a good friend who had gone through her own divorce two years earlier. Her friend confided that she detested the term divorcee, that she cringed at forms that she demanded she label herself as married, single, divorced, which to her said married, single, loser. I call myself a marriage widow, she told Schultz, because my marriage died. Schultz asked to borrow the label, asking, uh, adding, if I'm going to be a marriage widow, I need a marriage wake. So the journey began. With the focused eye of a wedding planner, she chose the flowers, music, tenants, and rituals that would speak to all the feelings her heart contained. The event consumed her, giving focus to her scattered emotions. This was not to be a divorce party, she insisted, but a healing rite of passage. I can't believe you go to a judge and boom! That's it, Schultz said. I need something more. By gosh, there should be some way to handle this transition besides putting your head in the sand. I mean, you have a ceremony for everything else in life. That's how it started, and it's kind of taken on a life of its own. Every detail assumed symbolic importance. Schultz had her cream silk wedding suit dyed black after finally locating in Michigan someone brave enough to take the job. It cost $200 and came with this warning. Don't go near the rain. In Seattle. Okay. <laughs> she had a halibut piñata. Custom made at piñatas.com for $60 plus shipping. She filled it with little gavels and tiny salmon candies. She ordered a three-tier wedding cake with layers placed frosting side down Lemon, of course, because when life hands you lemons, you make lemon cake. Striving to avoid the bitterness that dogs so many marriage widows, Schultz said she tried to leaven the event with humor and class. I asked myself, she must be older than she claims, what would Jackie O do? Who? Before long, Schultz had amassed a large volunteer planning committee. One friend designed her website, another created the invitations, and yet another suggested the ceremony represent the stages of divorce recovery, sadness, anger, fear, and acceptance. Her island neighbors, people she had known for less than a year after moving there from Issaquah, offered support and marked their calendars. The public embrace was a revelation to the peripatetic Air Force brat, now a tech consultant whose therapist calls her defensively self-sufficient. I had no idea how much it would come to mean to me, Schultz said. And so the big night arrives. The lights are low, tables lit with floating candle centerpieces, an arrangement of yellow and white roses, lily and carnations, towers over the guest book and programs. At hand is a silent auction sheet that will, by evening's end, raise $2,000 to the island's helpline house and the Kodiak Island Women's Crisis Center. And the prize... February 14th dinner with the marriage widow because Schultz said, I don't want to be alone on Valentine's Day. At 6.05, nine pallbearers 
and former bride's attendants form a semicircle on the dance floor, and the ceremony begins. Schultz somberly stands before them, fighting tears, elegant in the black suit that fits her slender five-foot-ten frame like a custom-made running shoe. Her head is bowed, her face obscured by a beaded veil as loved ones approach the lectern. Many of you have known Amanda throughout her entire marriage, says the officiant, her, her friend Doug Berry. Being here tonight, we all know Amanda does nothing halfway. Another friend, Mary Patterson, reads a poem she and Schultz found recently on the wall of an Irish cafe. I want to know if you'll risk looking like a fool for love, Patterson reads. I want to know if you can see beauty even when it's not pretty. I want to know if you can get up after a night of grief. I want to know what sustains you from the inside with all else fails. After a recitation of memories and blessings, the celebrants raise plastic jiggers of Jameson's Irish whiskey and bid adieu to sadness. Stage two, anger. Supplies welcome catharsis. Bat in hand, Schultz approaches the dangling piñata. The crowd cheers and claps as she tries to blast it out of the park. The paper halibut twists on its rope until finally, after a whack, 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 Fins fly off and the body hits the floor. Schultz pummels away, then stomps on the wreckage, as she said the day before she's no saint. Still in anger mode, she lights a copy of her marriage certificate and drops it flaming into a large silver bowl. Then she feeds the flame with a list of regrets. The paper is slow to catch it. Someone calls jokingly, those regrets are hard to get rid of. Moving swiftly to stage three, fear, Schultz prepares to perform a ritual trust fall into the arms of two male pallbearers. You're really going to catch me, she asks, peering over her shoulder. Everyone laughs. She hesitates. She hesitates. Then back she topples. More cheers and applause. Schultz is barely back on her feet before a bevy of attendants engulf her. With a few deft moves and some tugging and unhitching, they whisk off the widow's weeds. And there stands Schultz in a pale green floor-length gown, a glorious creation she found in the French Quarter of New Orleans and wore under the black wedding suit. Her long blonde hair is braided close to the head, giving her the look of a Celtic maiden. In this symbolic journey, Schultz has reached the stage of acceptance. The music rises with a dance-happy, booming beat. Hugs flow like wine, cameras flash. Schultz, in what she calls her mermaid dress, is radiant, like someone who leaped off the high dive and survived the fall. It was everything I had hoped it would be, she says, as the partying amps up, and off she swims, as one celebrant put it, into the warm sea of single life. That's from the Seattle Post Intelligencer. Now, reviewing uh, just some of the uh, some of the reviews of this story. The letter writers refer to this woman as an attention whore, a bitch, a loser, neurotic, passive, whining, aggressive, bitch again, ridiculous, pathetic, scary. It just goes on here. And then finally, let me review that one comment from Alan in Covington, Washington, who wrote, Most of these women who get divorced need only to look into the mirror, look at a photo from their wedding day, then look back into the mirror to see why the man left. Do you agree with the letter writers? Is she a pathetic, whining bitch? Do you think this is a good idea somehow? Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. My wife and I will be together forever. Oh my God! Don't you think everybody who gets married says that? I don't know. I know. I, I said it four times. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas only on Hot Talk Ten Eighty K O T K. Yeah, the Tom Like It Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. Allison on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. It's an honor to be talking to you. Yes, I know. I know. You are a, a thing that we talk about in my family daily. My mom listens to you. My brother, we talk about you at the dinner table. I love that. Yeah. Anyway, so I was going to comment on the article you just read over the air. Yes. 
And this woman is an absolute attention whore. And I'm 22. I've never been married. I've never been divorced. But, I mean, I just, by listening to this, knowing what an attention whore she is, I mean, being married for 11 years, you're not going to be cured in one evening of doing strange rituals and having people, you know, catch you and lighting things on fire. She's going to go home, look at her black dress, look at her weird green suit that she bought, and feel just as miserable as when she started. Uh, I say, you know, when you have a divorce... The best thing to do is just move on. Stop exactly. wallowing. That This strikes me as just a bunch of wallowing. Exactly. Get exactly. over it. Move on. Exactly. Like one of my best friends, her parents just got divorced, and the mom redid the house. She, you know, dyed her hair, went on a diet. She changed things in her life, not sat there and wallowed back in the 11 years and, and did all this weird crap. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I you know, I, I, I just think this is somebody who is wallowing in Self pity. That's what they. That's what they're doing. Absolutely, and it's completely pointless. And all she does is, is want some attention. You know, maybe you she yeah. even thought she could pick up a date. Attention <laughs> whore. Attention whore. Now, hang on a second, Jacqueline. You don't agree. No, I don't. Why not? Because, well, I was going through much the same situation, and I um, arrogantly thought that I was coming up with the idea myself. I was going to have a huge party, a divorce party. Why not get a bunch of friends together, a bunch of alcohol, and Kick it That's off fine for maybe one evening, but you have to live the rest of your life. Oh yeah, you get to go course. after the party. Of course, once you, once you, when, what? What after the party? You go on. You go on. But why? But, you, you know, give validation to your husband that you divorced. You know what I mean? That's giving him such validation about how much he hurt you. Why would you want to even bother with the party? Get on with your life. Take that money. This woman probably spent thousands and thousands of dollars on this. Oh, thing. I agree. She was way extreme. I was just thinking about a bunch of food and a lot of alcohol. Well, you know, that's different. <laughs> you know, because it's you know, a depressing situation, you know, signing your divorce papers, realizing that, yeah, it is over. You know what? have it in a well, Please stop but You know what? Have you have a couple of us bro girlfriends over some hot wings, a couple of beers, and be exactly. done with it. Exactly. Why not spend hey, a bunch of beers, beers and a bottle of tequila? There you go. <laughs> uh, but you don't have to invite people like it's a wedding and have all no, these dozens no, of people. I, I mean, it's like I said, it's stupid. too extreme. You know, it puts an upswing on everything. Have a party. Let it go out with a bang. That's my I thing. know, but this woman was ridiculous. I mean, she's going on pinatas. What was the, with the salmon anyway? Was there? Some yeah, she, yeah, he was. No, no, no. no you, if you heard the story, no, no. If you heard the story, her husband was a commercial fisherman. Oh, that's what it... Okay, so I, I didn't hear that. I'm like, what, yes. what the hell's up with the salmon? <laughs> yes, that's what it is. That's why she had okay. little gabbles and little salmons. Little rest in peace cake, you know? Oh, stop it. Stop <laughs> I it. Say, oh. I say rent a stripper, get a bottle of tequila. That's it. That's all you... Go yeah, to turn it. it into a good time. A really sucky situation into a party. Hey, right. Any excuse is a good one, right? Exactly. I know. I think some women are, are born attention whores, and if they find a reason to, you know, bring more attention on themselves, then they'll find a way to do it. No doubt about it. Allison, Jacqueline, thank you for the calls. We are toll free here. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, what's your reaction to this woman who had the marriage wake? Yikes! It's the Tom Likas Show. Like us on Hot Top. This is the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> yeah. From Los Angeles, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. It's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I am happy that she is taking that rather than trying to milk the guy for all the money he's got. Yeah. Well, how much does he have? He's a commercial fisherman, for Christ's sake. Hey, some of those guys can pull in a lot of green. Yeah, maybe so. Six months out there, they make a couple hundred thousand. Yeah. They, yeah they're on the right boat, and uh, they've been at it long enough, and uh, she doesn't want to wait around, try to make herself look better after all that time, and she wants to throw a party, get it good, gone. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, come on. It, it, it really is an attention whore thing to do. Boo yeah. hoo hoo! You know what? Who cares? Crocodile tears. Nobody cares. All right? Yeah. Nobody gives a nobody damn. Nobody you know cares. She, she makes herself feel better. That's By the way, fine. you chose him. You know, if the guy's a jerk, you chose him. All right, uh, sister. So give it up. Yeah. Well, you know what I found interesting was the other lady that called in, a girl, whatever you want to call her, about the, her friend who dyed her hair, or had her friend dyed her hair, lost weight, did all the other things that to attract another guy, but she didn't want to sit there and do all that 
while she was married to the other that guy. That is always the story, let me tell you. Joe on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, I had to laugh when you said Bainbridge Island. That place is full of such yuppie, pretentious people, it's pathetic. <laughs> and then when you said she moved from Issaquah, I laughed even harder, because that's the wannabe Bainbridge Island people. <laughs> and they all really want to live on Mercer Island, but Bill Gates won't let them. <laughs> but, you know, the funny thing is, is that, uh, did you catch the article that said her wedding suit? Yes. <laughs> yes. Most women have a dress. Yes. Uh, and uh, also, it's like, uh, obviously, you guys picked up on the uh, commercial fishing thing. She's spending his money on all this stuff. Oh, yeah. Party and all that. Oh, absolutely. And then wanted him to find out about it, too. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, take me out, Angela Song, dude. That's all I got. Angela Song style. Flash of Jug, or uh, uh, what's his name? We got something here for you. Here it is. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Cat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. Hi Cat. Never called you before, but I enjoy your show very much. Thank you. I'm just kind of wondering why we're not ragging on the men here that throw their divorce parties. I don't know any men who've ever done this. Oh wow, absolutely. I'm I mean, I know men who go to Vegas and uh, you know go find a hooker out of the phone book. I've known that, but I don't know anybody's <laughs> having a party. I've actually been to quite a few um, divorce parties that were men that were throwing them yep. for their divorce. Never heard of it. And by the way, if they were throwing a party, did they throw a wake? I mean, this is not a party. This is a wake. <laughs> well, right. Yeah, if you're trying Where you dress in black and you agonize over, oh, let's think about the good times. Let's think about, oh, stop. No, you don't think about the it's good times. goddamn pity party. That's what it is. <laughs> Most of the ones I've been to, they've been celebrating and they got rid of the bitch. So. Well, that's that's a whole other story. And you know what? Right. If you've dumped that bitch, maybe it sh you should have a party. But a wake? Exactly. A wake? They throw the party to celebrate. They actually got rid of the luggage. Yeah, that dump that goddamn bitch. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to call to find out why we weren't ragging on the men a little bit. But uh, Well, they don't hold, men don't hold wakes when it's over. Men have yeah. parties. Men invite strippers and hookers. And then men have sex with as many women as possible. <laughs> They don't start having wakes, and they don't wear black. Not all women. They don't hold a funeral. Please, stop it. That bitch is gaw wow wow and I'm not paying her bills anymore. That's that's the reason to celebrate. There are women out there that pay their bills. Don't forget us. us yeah, but not many, and most of them are single. Uh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> There's some men that can't handle a woman that likes to take care oh, of Oh, dear. We, oh, dear. We could handle one if we could only find one who would shut her mouth once in a while. <laughs> All right. You got me there. I know. <laughs> Have a beautiful night. Love you, show. Thank you, Kat. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Anthony on the Job Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Anthony. Can you imagine what it must have been like to be married to this woman? Oh, uh. Oh, my God, feeling sorry for herself and calling the newspaper to make sure they wrote about you got to be kidding me. What kind of ritual must he have gone through to have sex with her? Phase one, phase two, phase three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, uh-huh. It's outrageous. Let me tell you something. If she was smart, she would have had the party at a gym because that's probably where she needs to go. Well, you know what? That's where they all go after they drive us away, you see. Yep. While they're with us, they don't want to go to the gym. Absolutely. It's and after we leave that they go to the gym. These women that throw these parties with all these activities, it's just because they have nothing real to talk about. A, a party should be a bunch of people sitting around talking politics, sports, uh, religion, you know, uh, relationships, not like running around doing activities and games and right. nuttiness. Exactly. Nuts. Take me out ex-girlfriend style where you hang up on me and give me a bitch. Hang up on you and give you a bitch, okay? Hang up on me and call me a bitch. That's all, what I do to my ex-girlfriend. All right, here you go. Bitch. 1-800-5800-TOM-DAN on the Tom Likas Show. Yeah, hey, Tom. Dan. I just find it ironic that uh, while this ninny was spending a bunch of money, wasting a bunch of energy, and jumping around like a jackass, the guy's doing the real therapeutic thing, which is being out on the seas, Hooking some fish yeah. and drinking some beer. You damn skippy. 1-800-5800-TOM.
1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-TOM. What? The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas. Only... It's Terry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I just had a quick comment to make about, um, not that I agree with the woman having a wake for a divorce that she's going through, mm. but when you had mentioned that guys would go out and celebrate in Las Vegas, good for them, let them do it, sleep with everybody, but if she, if a woman were to do that, she'd be considered a hoe. What do we care? What do you care? What's the difference? You know what? She'd be a hoe. So what? But I'm just, I guess you're right. Who cares, right? Well, who cares? I mean, yeah. so what if she's a hoe? Yeah, you're right. I mean, most men hope you're a hoe when we meet you. <laughs> we won't yeah. we won't marry a hoe or take you home to our uh, parents, but uh, we hope you are a hoe because we want those legs spreading. Uh huh. So were a lot of your ex wives hoes? Uh, well, I, I, I I'll put it this way: uh, they all went to bed with me the first night. They did. That's very interesting. Yeah. Wow, and you married them, huh? I did. So that's a contradiction of what you just said. No, it's really not, because I'm talking about men in general. Okay, you're just different. I and not for any uh, not for any good reason. I just don't care. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's the only comment I had to make. And we don't care. So she's a whole big deal. Yep, you, right. you, 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 by, by the way, guys are hoes by definition. That, that's what we do. When we get divorced, uh, we don't want to think about the pain that was just caused to us. We have sex with as many women as possible. The younger, the better. The hotter, the better. That's how we get over it. Yeah, that's. I agree. It's, it's the way of sight. Living that's well is the best thing. revenge, and there's nothing you want more than your ex to see you with somebody younger, hotter, That's better. true. What do you think about Demi Moore? What do I care? I mean, Demi Moore. I I, I really don't care about Demi Moore. I'm more concerned about Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, what? I was just wondering. Uh, well, you're making comments about men, so I was just wondering what you thought about that. I really you don't. Did. Yeah, let her go, right? I, I, Good for her. I don't really care. I don't think it proves anything. One thing I will say is that women who are Demi Moore's age, who date guys Ashton Kutcher's age, are in the mistaken impression that the fact that the guy is 23, 25, whatever, means they've still got it. And what it really means is just that you're getting easy access, easy on, easy off. It does not yeah. mean you've still got it. Yeah. She's got cash, though. Maybe that's what he's in it for. Who knows, right? He's got cash. You, you, what, are you kidding me? He's, uh, he's on that 70s show. He's on punk he's, uh -huh. uh, he's done a couple of movies. Yeah, that's true. Well, she looks good. But she spent probably... Uh, come on, how much plastic surgery did it take to get her to look like that? I said, they say 250000 She's old <laughs> enough to be his mother. And uh, you know what? If that's if, Fine, if that's what she wants to do. I is 23, 25, whatever, means they've still got it. And what it really means is just that you're getting easy access. Easy on, easy off. It does not yeah. mean you've still got it. Yeah, she's got cash, though. Maybe that's what he's in it for. Who knows, right? He's got cash. You, you, what, are you kidding me? He's, uh, he's on that 70s show. He's on punk He's uh -huh. uh, He's done a couple of movies. Yeah, that's true. Well, she looks good, but she spent probably... Uh, come on, how much plastic surgery did it take to get her to look like that? I said, they say 250000 She's old <laughs> enough to be his mother, and uh, you know what? If that's if, Fine, if that's what she wants to do. Hey, but but again, what I'm saying, though, is that women in their 40s... Well, with guys in their 20s, don't get the mistaken impression that the fact that a guy in his 20s is having sex with you means that you've still got it. You have it. You can't be a 10 over age 30. It's done. Oh, I don't agree with that. I got uh, well, I know you don't. That's because you're over 40, much less over 30. But I'm telling you, over 30, you're not a 10 anymore. Okay. Okay. So all your wives are under 40. All my wives? Well, let me yeah. see. They were all under 40 when I married them. Oh, Okay. So when they get to 40, you dump them. I've always said there's an expiration date. There's no problem. Right. That's your life. That's, you know, whatever That's you want. That's the way it works. One way to keep a marriage fresh, get married every couple of years. Well, so a lot of people do that. No problem. Yes, I just want yes we do. I can afford 40. the best. Are you kidding? Why Why should I have anything less than the best? Yeah, that's the way society is set up. It's no problem with that's me. That's it? I don't care. That's the way it is? Yep, you're right. You're absolutely right. You read the first Wives Club, right? 
Saw the yeah. movie? And no, then, I haven't. And she no, just no, died having a chin implant or whatever she was doing or having chins removed? I don't know what it was. The woman who wrote that book? Yeah. Yeah, having plastic surgery, trying to look younger? Yeah. <laughs> How deliciously ironic. Okay, well, this has been an interesting conversation, but I'm going to dinner right now meeting some people. Okay, very good. You do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. you. No, she had to let me know she's meeting some people. Letting me know people are still talking to her at 46. Oh, I hate the attention horse. Oh. Probably other bitter older females. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Dean on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? I was doing a radio show here, Dean. Dude, I got one problem with this whole thing. I don't know if anybody's thought about this, but what about the little pussy boys that are her pallbearers, her little friends in her office, her little queer ass the straight guy boys who, who tell her it's going to be okay? You know, the guys who actually go to lunch and listen to her. What about these guys? Who are these guys? Well, how about the guys who are just trying to nail her and they're acting like they're feeling sorry for her? Well, you know, that'd be me. I'd show up. But I'll, I'll, be, I'll be a pallbearer there, and uh, then after that, I'm going to uh, stick it to you. Uh, you. You know the real situation that's yes, going I do. on there, man. Yes, I do. It's, it's unbelievable. Anyway, she's just an attention whore, and I want you to take me out with a bong hit and a biatch. All right, Dean, here you go. Biatch. Regina on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. 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 I, you know, I just recently started listening to your show a couple months ago, and every time I hear the show, it's just it cracks me up because I hear all these whining men who whine about their wives and whine, whine, whine. You know what? They married them in the first place. Just like oh, I I agree with you on that. They married them in the first place, and uh, uh, really, they, they, I read they ne- no. But here's the deal: they never should have married them. Why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? That's what I always yeah. say. Yeah, and women the same thing. If you knew what no, you because doing. women expect us to pay for everything, and generally oh, they get no. us to pay for everything. I, oh, oh yes, I oh totally yes. Disagree. I am just because you weren't attractive person. enough to get a man who would pay for everything doesn't mean oh. that most women aren't uh, in that okay. ballpark. And you wouldn't know that because you have nice. Dear, I would know that because if if you've been with men and you've been paying their bills, you're not attractive enough to get a man to pay yours. No, nope. my husband and I paid the bill fifty fifty. Well, then you're still uh, more like a five or a six. You're not an eight or a nine or a ten. Uh, and, that, and you have a right eights, to nines, and tens don't pay the bills equally. They don't even pay close to equally. If the nine or ten were a good woman. There, we're not talking about, what, you know what, that's a very subjective term, a good woman. All I will know is that a 9 or a 10, that's pretty specific as to uh, what that entails. A woman who looks that good doesn't have to split the bills 50-50. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so what your 9... No, no, you know what, no, beauty is pretty much a popularity contest, and uh, we, we decide as a group what's beautiful and what's not. And if you if you are paying half the bills, you're not as beautiful as you think you are. And you're entitled to your opinion. you damn straight I am. 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 Can I tell you a joke? Okay. What's the best part about a Hummer? I don't know. 10 to 15 minutes of silence, buddy. Tom like a show? 1-800-5800-TOM is that telephone number. Julie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I've been listening to your show for quite some time, and I really enjoy it. Thank but you. I have, a, I have a question. Yes. You know, you promote the, the whole idea of guys, you know, try, try to get the best chick you can. You know, don't get married young. Wait till you get more money. Then you'll get better chicks, et cetera. Right. And, and you say... And then that, don't give them any of the money when you get it. Yeah, yeah, don't give them any of the money. Yet then you say that the hot chicks get everything paid for. They so do. how does a guy get a hot chick if he's not willing to pay more than 40 bucks? Uh, for the the trick is to appear to have money and to appear to be willing to spend it, but they're never actually doing it. But then that, won't the girl go away eventually? That's fine. And you go on to the next victim. Oh, so you don't ever want to... It's like robbing toll booths. You just keep moving from uh, toll booth to toll booth. Yeah, but don't you want the hot chick? Ultimately, isn't that the goal to get well, the hot chick? Well, you know, yeah, you again. To have her as long as you can. Well, and then, then you have to find the one who doesn't insist on having everything bought for her, and that's a very small group. Yeah, isn't it? Because the beautiful one is always going to get everything bought. Well, maybe you never get married. Maybe you just keep moving from toll booth to toll booth. 
Okay. I mean, maybe that's what you should do. Thanks, Tom. Well, thank you, Julie. This is Yvette on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Yvette. Uh, Tom, how are you? I'm a very big fan of yours. Um, I just called to say that... How big are you? How big am I? Yes. <laughs> well, not too tall, but uh, big in heart. Okay. Uh, Check it. So I just wanted to say, listen, I agree with you that uh, a lot of women there that are, you know, maybe a 9 or a 10 have nothing in their head. But uh, I don't know if you can generalize in that because... Well, there are, there are exceptions to every rule. But, darling, most beautiful women know they don't have to develop their brains, don't have to read or study or read the paper or watch the news because there will always be a guy with money who will do it for them. I understand, but my my opinion is that um, maybe because a woman uh, doesn't get all her bills paid by her man, that doesn't mean that she's not a 9 on a 10 or a 10, in my opinion. I mean, um, I tell you because uh, I know a lot of independent women out there, independent. Women who use the word independent are trouble. They're mouthy broads and never shut up, and they're always busy telling us how intelligent they are, and they don't need men. And uh, those are perfect women for a booty call, but uh, nobody wants to be around them. Hmm, because maybe they're too smart? <laughs> no, just because we don't want to hear you talking all the time about how smart you are. Yeah. You know what? If you're smart, we'll figure it out. Just shut up about it. <laughs> I know, Tom. You're, you're right. That's true. Of course. Okay, Tom. Thank you so much. I'm here to help, Yvette. Thank you. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at... BlowMeUpTom.com The Tom Likas Show. K-O-T-K Write us, The Tom Likas Show. Post office box 4455, Hollywood, California, 90078. Email us. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com